I think. Okay, cool. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, Megan James, and we are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast. Period. We have a very, very, very special guest today. She goes by the name of Big Boss Vet. Hi, guys. <laughs> and then we also have a special co-host today. His name is Casey. He's the owner of Pop Out Magazine. You already know what's up. Mm-hmm. Period. Okay, so before we start, I like to have all my guests start off with like a little icebreaker game. So we're going to play a game first. <laughs> Games okay. are fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to play Finish the Lyrics. Uh-huh. Before we start finish the lyrics, you don't have no rap beefs with no, none of the girls, right? Because I put some of the some girls' lyrics on here. I love all the girls. You love all the girls, and I love oh, that. Right. I, I love too. that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to start. You thought I was feeling you? That, that nigga. nigga. Um, it's not your turn. Oh, I thought I was feeling you. All right. You thought I was feeling you? Uh, that nigga a munch. Oh, that nigga's a munch. Uh, wait, you thought I was feeling you? That nigga's a munch. Ida, he ate. Wait, Ida? Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Ida, he, what? He ate it for lunch. The bitch on my baby, I get what I want. Like, okay. Yeah. And now we got. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. Oh, shit, I know it, but um, damn. When I bought the Ashton Martin. When I brought the Ashton Martin. Y'all yeah, thought it was me. Oh, uh, you 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 gotta stay out the game. Yeah, you, I gotta you, stay you out canceled. the game on this one. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. When I bought the Ashton Martin, y'all thought it was Brennan. Flexing on these niggas, I'm like Popeye on the spinach. Uh, yeah, I forgot this. I don't. <laughs> Man, if I knew that this was what was playing, I would have knew the lyrics for sure. Come oh, on. Okay, so we got one more. Um, Pound Town just left Pound Town. Uh, fuck my nigga. Uh, something something down. <laughs> yeah, that nigga dig a bitch down. Right. That nigga eat me out. That's right. He eat me out. Oh, shit. No. What the? I don't even know. The, okay, you know, we're going to get into the podcast. <laughs> I'm Listen, done. I'm done with you. You just killed this. You killed it. You lost. I definitely lost. So I'm going to take a take shot. A shot to, I'm going to mm, take a shot. You want to see a shot? Take a shot. Period. But I do know ski. We, uh, okay, we, we, right. we done with finish the lyrics. Right, we don't finish the lyrics. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, cool. So um, I've been following you on Instagram for a very long time. And my first time ever seeing you was at the BET Awards carpet, like right. in person. Um, this past hip hop awards, and I must say that like the face card is a motherfucking twelve. It's yeah. a twelve out of ten. It is. Thank you. Thank I thought you were so 20. pretty, and you. She was. She was yeah. so super nice, super humble. Um, and I did some research, and it says that you're born on October sixteenth. I'm Libra. Yeah. I'm an Aquarius. Ew. I'm a Leo. So um, mm. my I, sister Leo. What's wrong mm. with us Leos? Y'all crazy. First y'all be sweet, then y'all fucking sour. We do. It's in the middle. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna get into like talking about zodiac. So, what is the worst sign to you to date, and why? Scorpio. Why? I love Scorpios. Um, I want to say male Scorpios because I don't know, no, but male Scorpios because it's just like they narcissistic. Like, uh, it's either do what I say or do what I say. Like, oh no, you know, and um, oh my god. It's a, I can do this, but you can't. I, don't like that. I feel like that's all men. It is. It It is, but luckily about me, like, um, there's no double standards when it comes to me. Like, right. They always be like, oh, well, you can't do this because you're a, who can't? Watch me do it. Period. So what's the best sign today, in your opinion? Mm. Leo's. No. I, it ain't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't say one that I love. I like Capricorns. Like, my boyfriend's a Capricorn. My ex boyfriend was a Capricorn. I hate Taurus. I lo- like. I have a love hate relationship with Taurus. <laughs> like I love them, but they're like the worst people on the face of the earth. What do you think about they, a Cancer? They Ooh, too they soft. Is, they is they is bipolar. Like like they would That's be sick. so mean, and then once you give them the same energy, now it's like a you were so mean to me, but mm-hmm. you forgot that you was mean to me first. You like, do not make a Cancer mad. Yeah, they be like night and day. It's like who are you? like when Cancers get mad. It's like who are you? Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. It'd be like who the fuck are you? Seriously. Okay, cool. So we're gonna move on. Okay, so you have a viral. You had a viral song called "Snatched." Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know if you write your own music and like, what was your inspiration behind that song? Um, so when "Snatched" came out, yes, I do write my music. Um, but I but I do collaborate with with writers and creative minds as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, so when "Snatched" came out, um, it was a sample going around, and I'm like, I want to get on this sample, but I want to make the beat mad. Mm-hmm. So we put the sample into the beat, but um, came to the realization that the, that the sample was like expensive to clear, and I was a newly signed artist, so it's like, do you really want to spend this amount of money on this sample or make your own sample? So this is like the the Louisiana, like, 
You one of them? No, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who who was the originator for that sample? The 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 one that's inside my song now. Yeah. It's me. So you re said what she said. No, no, oh. no. I I went in and just started screaming other stuff because <laughs> I think, um, we can afford that sample. Like, right. And I'm like, I would I would I would I, would, I would, like I would rather spend the money to like push the song, market the song, mm-hmm. instead of just spending it like on on the sample right now. Mm-hmm. So um, you have to pick your poison. And I'm like, I go in there and just start screaming shit. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I uh, screamed was like, he wanna dive in it. I'm that shit kind of sound good. Period. <laughs> so um, when they repeated that, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's leave that right there. And then yeah. um, another producer like like changed the sound of my voice because he's like, a sample should not sound like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sound different. So he made my voice deep as hell, and I'm like, all right, that's cool too. Like, mm-hmm. fuck it, let's go. And nah, that that whole song is me. So um, well, damn, I had a question, a really good question. Well, okay, hold on. I, it's the drinks. I need to stop. God, it was it was a really really good question. <laughs> but okay, I'm like, it's gonna come back to me. So you you be you heavy into your like creative process on the back end of your music. Yeah, like I I also be like co producing the beats that I'm on. Like I would tell them. Oh, that's dope. That where is. where to put this break in? Where to put this snare? In, where to put this 808? Like I would tell them where I want it. Mm-hmm. And um, then I start saying like a phrase or a cadence, and they'll build a beat around my the voice. cadence. Yeah. So yeah. Um, do you? Okay, you said you you write your own music. Do you think that's important for for artists in general? Because there's all this controversy about oh she don't write. You don't that's think I don't think it's important at all. I don't all. either. No, it's all about how you how you, how you sell that it. record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if you sell that record like it's your own, why? Why does it matter? Right. I think the only ones that be so mad is, is the ones that can't do it. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it takes a different type of artist to even be able to rap somebody else's written song because you want to rap it like them. You want to rap it all weird. Like you don't really know how to rap it until you make it your own. You know. Right. right. So if you don't know how to do that, then it ain't gonna work for you either. Way. You right. Know? So whenever you did snatch, were you independent? No, I was you're already signed. Yeah. So as an independent artist, because yeah. at one point you were independent, yeah. what are, like what are the major differences? And do you do you feel like if you weren't signed, like you know, like you, you you're signed now, do you ever backtrack in your mind like maybe I should have stayed independent? Um, no, never. Because, okay. Um, to be honest, it it was it was more expensive being independent. Like, mm-hmm. Even though, granted, when you do get signed, you still cannot depend on your label for any and everything because labels drag your feet. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. And also, it's like it's a lot of red tape on certain things that they can't fund you for. So you still got to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Or if you have this vision or this I- or this idea and they don't see it that way, it's like if you see it, you better move when you feel like you need to move unless you're going to miss the moment. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, the difference is the money. like Because they have that machine that. behind you to, yeah. pu- to promote and push you forward. That too. They can get you on playlists, mm-hmm. uh, great marketing, um, things of that nature. Um, but my label was like I had a big label, so mm-hmm. we got like a lot of artists on there. So it's kind of like it's like mm, being on a big label is like it's like now we gotta like kind of like try to like rush to like shoot videos and all this so we can get the budgets because the bigger artists get the get the budgets first, and it's like oh, wow. trickling down. It trickles Absolutely. down. Wow, so, I never knew that. I didn't either. Yeah, so the the bigger artist gets it, and then everything else comes down. So if if you hurry up and do what you need to do and just be sitting on it, okay, well, I can drop this on that day. I can do that. I can do that, you know? Mm-hmm. But you just got to do it. You just got to move. Um, I was on, like, I obviously live on Instagram, like everybody else. I go to the school of Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I saw, like, a um uh something. I don't know which blog it was on, but it was uh, Bow Wow complaining about um new artists not having artist development. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about that? And did you go through any artist development? Uh, the only artist development I went through was like maybe two classes of uh, media training because mm. um, I didn't really, I was so scared to do podcasts or radio interviews because I'm like, what if they don't like me? Uh, I don't know, like what if I say something that I ain't supposed to say because uh, I used to be the type of person that would just say it and then, then think like, oh fuck, I said it already, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was scared of that and then like um, I was so like nervous that I was treating every interview as like a job like it was like they were like they're like hi we're like hello <laughs> like i would like instantly go to my um 
professional voice and mm-hmm. all that, you know. So, um, when I went through one class with him, he was like, "Yo, I don't know why you don't just talk like this. Like you literally just, just treat it like you having a regular conversation. Like this is not a job interview. Like mm-hmm. you're not trying to get a job. They already like you. They already love you. Right. And I was like, ah, all right, you know. And then like the the second time that me and him talked, I was just, I don't know. It, I just felt comfortable talking to him. Like, let's try one time just just to make sure I got it. And that was it. Like other than that, do you feel like art like the newer artists need art artist development, or do you feel like it they're just selling authenticity? Like, yeah. do you feel like fans respect and love authenticity versus like, okay, I'm a rapper now. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn. I have to have dance move for my performances. I need like set work. Like, like do you feel like that's necessary? They like both, mm-hmm. but you gotta know when to when to start um, changing it to like be more of a bigger and better person, you know. Mm-hmm. But in the beginning, oh, just have fun, like. Have fun, mm-hmm. but it does come a, come a time where that fun has to become business. It's like, all right, now carry yourself differently. All right, mm-hmm. now do this differently. All right, now you can't really be saying that, you know. But some people just like the authenticity, authenticity, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah. So um, you had also another viral TikTok song, not a t- TikTok song, but you had another viral. Wait, what is it? A song but, that went viral. But it did start on TikTok. The tic- TikTok starts all the viral anything. Period. Going. So yeah. you had a viral song. Wait, well, how should I say it? You had a song that went viral, viral on TikTok. TikTok. There you go. Period. It was called A Pretty Girl's Walk. Yes. So I want to know the inspiration behind that song and, like, how did you come up with... Like, I've heard it. I do sync music. So, like, the music that I do is behind, like, TV shows, know, radio, yeah. stuff like that. They have synced that song a lot of times. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. I've heard that song behind so many mm-hmm. commercials, so many, like, TV shows. Yeah. But I'm like, this bitch is getting a bag <laughs> no, off the real. syncs. <laughs> So um, how did you come up with this concept and, like, what motivated you to be like, this is what I want to do for this song? Um, I want to say that I was in, like, a very low low space in my life, you know. Of course, I didn't show it, but, you know, I was. And I told my producer, I'm like, I want a record that can speak to everybody in this country, you know. Um, and when he made the beat, I'm like, all right. And I was I was with this writer named T. Ron. Like, he's a huge writer, like, like if you look up T Ron, you will literally see like major artists has his has his songs. Mm-hmm. And me and him, Rocco, um, what's the other girl name? Um, no rest, but we were in a room just just like brainstorming and we and we came up with Pretty Girl Walk. But I was so terrified of it because that's rhythmic. And I'm a I'm a hip hop hood artist, you know, mm-hmm. raunchy artist, you know. So I'm like, yo, like, how do we do this transition? Um how how do I sell this to my fans? How they how, how they still gonna like me, love me, you know? Cause this is not what I rap about, you know. Mm-hmm. So we sat on the song for maybe a year, almost two, and we was like, put it out next. I'm like, what? Put it mm-hmm. out. And this was after after snatch. I'm like, go from raunchy to rhythm. All right, let's try. Yeah. So, um, I I first started teasing him. I'm like, it's not done yet. Don't put it out. Don't put it out. It's it's all right. We put it out and like. The first three months, it didn't do anything. And I thought, like, damn, like, I try to be different. This shit ain't work. Mm-hmm. And that's when, like, on the fourth month, it, it became a dance trend. And, and after it became a dance trend, then they literally started doing any and everything to it. Then there's mm-hmm. animals walking to it. Then it's fancy. But I'm just like, okay. So I ran in a rhythmic lane for maybe a year. Like, it was it was lit as hell. You know, I was on stages that I never thought I'd be on. Oh, wow. I was in rooms that I never thought I'd be in because of, of the my, genre. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And that's what made me come to the realization, like, you have to do more than raunchy music. You have to do more than hip-hop hip hop hood music because mm-hmm. they can't get you in air room. They can't get you in sync because you can't even cuss. Girl. <laughs> I'm going to come out with me a song. <laughs> I got you. I, I hit you back. Oh, for real? I'm lying. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was <gonna> say, <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, let me try to get on there and spit some. I'm, I'm screaming. Okay, cool. So, um, your latest EP was called Resilience. Yeah. Um, I want to know why you named it that. Um, because everything that I've been through in my life, like in the in the beginning, I was like, uh, I went through a, a really big downtime that 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 made me quit music for mm-hmm. like a year, and then um, when I came back. Um, I teased this song called Dog Ass Nigga. 
And I think like within the first day of me teasing this shit, they had like a hundred K views on Facebook. Wow. And I'm like, yo, I need to drop this song immediately. Like, like these hoes been waiting on me. You know, my shit <laughs> they waiting on you. <laughs> yeah. So um literally like put it out within like two weeks after that. Um and started getting bookings off that. Mm-hmm. Then I then I followed it up with like Diddy Bed and, you know, more raunchy shit outside. Outside was the was the record that actually got me thirteen label deals. You know, mm. I was in the bidding war with them. Wow. And yeah, we hit the ground running. So, um, it just like everything, you know, I got shot and I used to be outside whooping the holes. Now I'm beating the pen on the on the piece of paper to the Period. Like, you know, it's different. Mm-hmm. So being as though that I overcame everything that was sent to break me, it's like yeah. This shit is God. actually in me, you know. Yeah. No, for sure. Oh, one second. I have to get you. <gasps> Hello. So you out here making the moves? I know Louis. that's that's what I told my that's what I told my boyfriend. I was because we've never been in the Saint studio Louis? before. No? But okay. if you guys are here, um, I can have him here? come walk you in. Huh? How long you been living here? A year, almost a year. Almost. Huh? Almost. Okay, cool. I'll have. You liking it? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'll have my boyfriend walk to the driveway Kanye, and he'll okay. uh, drive you in. I mean, he'll steer you in. Oh yeah, that's like the outskirts. Yeah, I was in the outskirts. Put it on the long the um the three camera. I was in the outskirt, and then... Okay. Oh, we're going to say that for when we... Okay, we're back. It's okay. we on the three camera. Okay. Yeah. you got to walk to the top of the driveway, though. I'm going to ask you that question. Yeah, I got four. No, we just got to change, girl. Oh, no, no, no. I could just order... What, a chaotic? When I leave? Yeah. It's, his, it's Manny, his manager. Okay. Okay, cool. Back to, this, back to the story. Okay, cool. So, I have been getting in trouble lately because I don't be doing research sometimes on, like, my guests, mm-hmm. and I just be asking stuff off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. So... I did research on you. I love so, that. Yes, I, I did research. So I read online that you were pansexual. Mm-hmm. What is the definition of that? My love has no limits. Like, y'all might be like, oh, you like men, you like women. It ain't had no limits. I like, I, I love, that's it. Right. So what are the, have you ever dated, you've dated a woman, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh-huh. And you've obviously dated men. What are uh-huh. the differences to you? Like, if you're pansexual, <laughs> it's like people, are pansexual uh-huh. people like people that date off of energy, Right. It's like if I'm Vibes, vibing with energy. you, you could be a girl or a guy, whatever. If I like you, I like you. So, like, in that way, what are the differences between, like, men energy and women energy, like, when it comes to dating? See, like, when I, when I, like, <laughs> when I'm attracted to men, it's like, I don't know. Like, they just got to have this type of, like, dominant energy about them, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, um, of course, they got to be, like, on their shit, you know? Um, they gotta be handsome with the the teeth, the skin, the hygiene, nails, you know, the set. Because you know, if you meet somebody and they smell really good, you'll never want to deal with them. No, that's so true. It is. <laughs> that, you, you smell know? like him. <laughs> <laughs> um and also like man that's like patient and gentle, you know, like mm-hmm. You could be mean to everybody else, but you got to be, like, level, loving to me, you know? Um, and women, like, they just, I don't know, like, to be honest, um, it was just fun with women, you know? Mm-hmm. It was fun. You know, it's like, oh, you pretty. Okay. Let's do this. All right. You know? <laughs> you know? Quick little one, too, you know? But, yeah, like, women just fall in love faster. Yeah. Men, it's more like a, you know. It's like, it's like a, more of a challenge. Do you think it's more of a challenge? Like, as far as, like, ca- the cat and mouse game was like, okay, I want to be a yeah. girlfriend, and then I don't know yet, and then, yeah. okay, <laughs> yeah, like that. And women just be yeah. like, girl, I love you. Let's move in together. Let's get some more, get some more liquor. We have fun. <laughs> I, I like this. And, um, yeah, it's like, I, I just have to have the best of all worlds. Right. So, but right now, I'm, like I'm, she said that. I'm focused on my career. So. I want to know what your thoughts are on polygamy, since you are pansexual. Would you share a nigga? Hell no. Nah. I don't even or share. Or a girl. I, I don't even want to share liquor. Oh, period. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. Like it's so. I'm stingy. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, but with my career now, I don't even got time or as much success that I want. That you want to focus on a relationship? Be, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. But I've been seeing around the internet that like you and Sleazy World Go have like a situation. <laughs> shit. That's game. Yeah. <laughs> No, he. It was given like bad. Yo, yeah. no, it was a it was a video shoot. Mm-hmm. It was a video shoot, and um, and I fit the aesthetically pleasing part. And I was like, oh yeah, let's go, guys, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it was cool as hell. Like, he, he hella cool. Mm-hmm. So it was just business, basically. Yeah, it's business. Mm-hmm. And when everybody was like, yeah, that's your man, I'm like, if it's going to help him sell this record, say what the fuck y'all want to sell. Right. Like, Period. Okay. It's out now, so, you know, the cat's out the bag. Oh, no, it's just business. But <laughs> before, to just hype it up, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. If it's your man, I'm like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you know, but this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's October as well as Mental Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. Um, I read when I was doing my research that you've been shot before and it's giving you PTSD. Yeah. And I just want to know, like, how you're dealing with your PTSD um, and, like, if anybody has PTSD, like, what advice would you give them Give them on how to, like, get through that? Oh, um, right now, I just, I'm, I'm just faking it, like, head on. Um, for a long time, it was like very hindering, you know, like mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to go to big spaces. I didn't, I didn't like the 4th of July. Like I ain't like loud noises. I ain't like crowded areas, you know, and uh, that was very hindering, you know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. um, being as though that I had, you know, like that I have great management, you know, they would try to keep me away from it. But then like not even trying to, trying to face the fur would hinder you to like stay there forever. Mm-hmm. So, um, this 4th of July was the first 4th of July. I was not sloppy drunk, and I was just like, ah! Okay. Ah! okay like, <laughs> I was I scared was shitless, but it was like, you have to do it. Like, you mm-hmm. have to do this, you know? Um, Jesus. Like, I went to my first big concert, like, the other day. Was it two days ago? Mm-hmm. It was a Gucci Mane concert. Mm-hmm. I have concert anxiety. Oh, my gosh. If it's, if it's not mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, horrible, like, horrible. But I was in there, and I was like, <laughs> like, girl, I was scared. She was not even drunk, and I'm like, I can do this. Like, yeah, that means that I'm you in have my mind, like, you can do this, you can do this. Like, come yeah. on, you have like, it's just facing your fears, like, mm-hmm. and that's the scariest thing ever, right? And it's and it's all about change, like facing your fears, because you are comfortable with avoiding them scenes, so you don't you don't feel that fear because you don't humans, you don't you don't like feeling that, right? Mm-hmm. But at some point in time, it's like if your management, which if my management was to leave me today or tomorrow, I would have to face my fears. Right. So yeah. why not face it while I have while you manager. have a manager? Yeah. Even though they not never leave me because if, if they leave, I'm going with them. Like, what the period. Going? Like, where the fuck y'all thought y'all <laughs> was going? <laughs> but, no, like, yeah, like just you just face it. Like, mm-hmm. I know it's so hard. I know it's I know it's easier said than done because that be I was I was in that concert sweating bullets. Like I was it was hot. I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa, but I did it. You know yeah. what I do it again. Maybe, you know, yeah. but I did it. You did it. You did do I it. And that it. Ca- that's what counts. You know, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, you went on tour with Nick Cannon mm-hmm. and the crew. Yeah. Um, how was that experience? And did you get to meet any of his baby mamas? <laughs> 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 well, um, the experience was lit, like lit as hell. Um, that shit, it was, it was expensive. I ain't gonna lie. Um, what do you mean it was expensive? You had to pay? Like, like, okay. So what I had to pay for was like rooms and all that shit. What? He didn't pay for that. You know Nick Cannon no, make whoa, like whoa, whoa. $70 million a month. He did. He did. He did. Oh. But, but it was like, I just wanted to be comfortable. Like, we had a tour bus and all that. So, like, literally, like, being on there, it was like lit. We had a nice ass tour bus. Mm-hmm. Check my TikTok out. Post it. <laughs> um, everything was taken care of. Mm-hmm. But I chose to pay. Like, I like I chose to buy me certain shit. Because I, cause I Cause you wanted to be comfortable. Because I wanted, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like. But he had a sick girl from A through Z. Like, mm-hmm. it was good. Um, the only thing was just like the like like the nights that we performed. Then we hopped right on the road. Like, my body was so damn tired. I'm like, yo, this is this is this is life right now. Like, mm-hmm. and like doing like twenty minute sets by myself with no dancers. Like, mm-hmm. cause shit, I couldn't I I couldn't afford to just bring my team to every city that I was in because you right. know, I was still coming up. I was still doing the shit. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like just sacrificing, just putting it to your career is like that shit was a lot. Right. You know? But we still came out on top. You know, we still finished that shit. We still walked it down all cities. Mm-hmm. And it also taught me that everybody don't don't like big bosses, and that's absolutely fine. But right. You still have to walk in every room and, and be be and be, be big who you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Period. Like, so exactly, that's true. Yeah. How do you feel about the uh, rap beefs with female rap? I don't get into that. Mm-hmm. Like, if if anybody, a rapper, a regular person, an 
animal. Uh, <laughs> if they don't like me, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but what do you feel? Because okay, we spoke about that earlier in the podcast that you not you not beefing with nobody. No. But like just from an outsider looking in, since mm-hmm. you don't get into it. Like, do you think it's, like, a bit childish and stupid? I think it's so dumb. It's very childish. I think, shit. I don't, see, back in the day when I used to be, you know, I, it, it was like, I don't know, like, you would you would have, have had to really do some shit to me. Like, because I'm, I'm non-confrontational, but I think people used to confuse the non-confrontational where you can whip my ass. You know that? Oh, yeah. They always confuse and that. And it's two different things. Yeah. Like, now, I don't want to be in this situation, but you cannot be with like that. I mean, Period. <laughs> two different things, you know? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, I. <sighs> it's. I don't know. Like, certain shit I wouldn't beef about, but certain shit other people would. Right. You know, like, some people play about certain things that others don't. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like that if we, if we respect. Everybody wouldn't beef, you know. Right. Whatever. Do you think there's a thing called healthy beef between female rap? Females? Or like healthy competition? Yeah, healthy competition. No, because fans create beef. They do. Yeah. Fans create. It's it's fans right now trying to create beef, and I'm just like, yo, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. I sw- I don't I don't I don't I don't give a fuck because I'm I'm so big on like, yo, I got too much to lose right now. Like back in the day, you should have called me back then because bitch, I ain't have shit to lose and I would have helped you lose everything that you got. <laughs> but now, no, no. Like now, I, baby, I'm getting turned in the club, shaking my head. I, I, don't, I don't care about nothing but having a ball. Right. You only yeah. get one like, so er, like everything outside of that is like, nah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. who's your dream co- collaboration, girl and guy? Katy Perry. Yes, Katy Perry. That's an interesting answer, though. Yeah, I was not expecting I that. wasn't either. Um, Russ. I like him, too. I like his vibe of music. Yeah. Katy Perry and Russ, if y'all ever just happen to slide by the podcast. Cousins. Come on. Period. <laughs> okay, cool. So we're at the end of the podcast. Oh, shit. Yes, tell everybody where they can find you, all your social media platforms. Yeah, I can find me um, on Earthang at Big Boss Vet, B I G B O S S V E T T E. Become my cousin and watch me shake my ass all over my social media and promote my songs. Period. Resilient. Make sure you guys uh go listen to Resilience. Go listen to Resilience. Oh, also go listen to I Don't Run. I literally just dropped it on YouTube and it's only on YouTube and the hoe is going up. Yes. I have to go back to my to my raunchy bag. So y'all don't like that. You know, I What's it called? I don't run. I don't run. Like I O N run. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't run. So it's like now I'm I'm split in the middle because now I finally found balance between my rhythmic and my raunchy. You yeah. Know? Gotta have balance. At first, yeah. I didn't know it. So, mm-hmm. for this whole year, I've been battling. But Period. We got it now. We got it. We okay, got so it. you guys, it's a wrap for the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast featuring yes. Big Boss Vet and... CTD Graphics Pop Out Magazine. Period. Oh, I like it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> she could, she got me saying period. <laughs> period. Period. If, if y'all hear like at the air drop that I do, I'd be like, pull up. Like, period. Like, it's period. Like, End it. Okay, so Stop. they've been outside for a long time. Where the fuck did you go? No, Are I'm you gonna lost? Get, I'm gonna get her too on the magazine cover. Come on, come on. Like, Fire. Yeah. He's had like so many people on his covers. Like their their magazine I, is like a big magazine. And I, I like I like taking pictures in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Let me get your. Where can I find your information? How I reach Big you? Boss Vet and um my my hold on I got a publicist reach. Can I can show her contact with you in a second. What's your number? 813-405-9914. Okay, she actually called me. That's cool if I do that, all right? Hi. Dre. Hey. What's up? Hold on, hold on, Dre. Uh, I, I don't know my iPod yet. Hold on, I'm going I'm to call you on the phone so you can talk to him. Hold on. Hi, <laughs> Mimi. I'm going to call him on the phone. Let me just listen. Uh, it's right here. What's up? You sit here. You sit right here. Yeah, this is Casey. Um, my name. I'm basically the owner of Pop Out Magazine. I want to oh, talk yeah, to no, you guys. No, 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 no. Boss Hello. vet on our cover. Can I get your number? 